anyone can do the splits if they're under anesthesia. It doesn't matter how stiff you are when you're awake, when you've been put under and you're on the operating table, the surgeon could position your legs into a perfect split. Have you ever heard the unconscious splits theory? As someone who is super inflexible, I'm quite intrigued by it. Whenever I try to do the splits, I get to a point where I feel this pain and tightness in my muscles and it's pretty much impossible to go further. But according to the unconscious splits theory, what's stopping us from being flexible isn't our body, it's our mind. And when our mind is fully unconscious, for example, when we're under a general anesthetic, we can move much more freely. Okay, I wanna know, is the unconscious splits theory even true? Or is it some crazy Reddit old wives tale? The first thing I'm gonna do is some research, but there was only one relevant study that I could find. And it looked at the hamstring flexibility of people with and without anesthesia. For people who received spinal anesthesia, there was an eight degree increase in the popliteal angle. So a small increase in hamstring flexibility and there wasn't really any difference for people who received other types of anesthesia. But this study was tiny, only 15 people, and it was done over 20 years ago. So I don't think it can really tell us that much about the unconscious splits theory. To get some help, I reached out to an expert on flexibility, and I thought he'd say that the unconscious splits theory is ridiculous, but his response actually surprised me. Your brain has an idea of how much it wants to move the body's joints. If the brain does not perceive that a joint has stability or strength towards its end of range, it sends a signal to the muscles to prevent you from going into that position it doesn't feel comfortable controlling. And how does our brain limit the amount of time we spend at the end of our range of motion? Well, we feel a sensation of pain and tightness in the muscles, which is basically a signal from the brain saying, hey, stop stretching so much before you do some damage. According to Dr. Ingram, the idea is still controversial but possibly our mind plays a big role in how flexible we are. So what happens here is I've never stretched before and I start stretching. I'm like, oh, that's quite painful. But I practice it over a number of days, weeks, months, and nothing actually physically changes at the muscle level. So the muscle doesn't actually become less stiff, doesn't actually become longer. I just simply adapt to the pain that's associated with that stretch that I can actually now go further into it to get the same amount of pain or that previous stretch in that specific angle is just less painful. It's called stretch tolerance. If we stretch repeatedly over time, our brain gets more comfortable with the process, especially if we take slow, deep breaths during the stretching sessions, which reassures the brain that we're safe and we're not getting injured. The result is that we perceive less pain and tightness. This could possibly be due to reduced signaling from the NOSI receptors in our muscles and tendons. And these are basically the nerve endings that detect potential injury, say excessive stretching, and then send signals to the brain, which creates that feeling of pain and discomfort. And one way that we can prove this theory is if you get someone who's got a lot of tone or quite stiff, if you put them under general anesthetic, all of a sudden, they can go a lot more flexibility. Wait, what? And so is it because when you're unconscious, your brain isn't able to perceive that this new range that you're going into might be dangerous for, for your mm. joints and body? Correct. Yeah, correct. It doesn't have that feedback. Yes, anesthesia could help to increase your flexibility by shutting down your conscious mind and its protective mechanisms. But hold up. That does not mean that the unconscious splits theory is completely true. There are still physical limitations, like the length and stiffness of your muscles and the anatomy of your joints. Yeah, it depends. So if you, again, if you've got someone who has poor passive and active flexibility, the general anesthetic's not gonna probably give you much extra range. So if there is a flexibility improvement when you're knocked out, it probably wouldn't be huge. Like you wouldn't be going from zero to full splits. And if we wanna know for sure whether this strange theory is true, we need more studies with very accommodating people volunteering as participants. So the unconscious splits probably isn't possible unless you can already do the conscious splits, but it does raise an interesting question. How much of our flexibility is in our body, our muscles and our joints versus our mind? And what could be possible if we can get past these barriers in our brain?